imagine it's 10.30 a.m. and you're sitting in your third grade class ready to take the big test on Great American Inventors. There you sit as your teacher places a sheet of paper in front of you. Now the page is full of words that have to be decoded in order for you to prove that you've mastered the text being given to you. But try as you may to decipher the words on the page, for the most part, the text is just incomprehensible. And at that moment, you resign to the fact that you have just failed another test, but you can't figure out why it is you can't read. Now to most of us, this is a foreign experience. However, to Caleb, it was a way of life. Just a little bit of background on me before I go too much further. I'm an associate professor of design and a design researcher. I'm also a product of public schools. I'm the daughter of a reading teacher, my mom, and a product inventor, my dad. And when you put them together, you get me someone who develops reading technologies because she wanted to help people like Caleb. 12 years ago, Caleb, the dyslexic son of one of my dearest friends, made a profound statement that sent me on an amazing journey of developing reading tools. He said, I think I keep failing these tests because of the way the page is laid out. While I don't suffer with dyslexia, early on, as I was learning to read and write, it was difficult. So as I stood there and looked at his frustrated face, I thought to myself, if I could use my skills as a graphic designer to help change his experience in school, I'm all in. But before I could begin, there were a few things that I needed to understand, like how you teach somebody to read? What role does your learning style play in your ability to read? What are the issues surrounding reading with dyslexia? Well, in my research, I discovered something. While it wasn't the page layout, there are strategies that we use as graphic designers that could possibly be employed to teach early reading skills. But my research didn't stop there. I spent time observing a school that specialized in teaching ADHD and dyslexic learners. I cold called specialists who were studying how the technologies of the time would impact education. And my team and I began making things and bringing it to individuals like that for feedback. Now there were a lot of things that did not work along the way. <laughs> One of our early prototypes, when we put it in front of kids, they looked at it and said, what? But we kept with the positive attitude and what resulted were two fonts. C-type and squishy squashy. C-type cues you to hearing the sound associated with the letter form. For example, if you were reading on screen and you couldn't remember what sound the letter P makes, simply roll over the letter and watch it morph into different images. Saying the images aloud cues you to hearing the sounds associated with the letter. Peach, penguin, Pig. Squishy Squashy visualizes the rules to the English language, also known as orthographic patterns. So if you were reading on screen and there was a long A sound in the word, the letter would stretch long versus a short A sound would stay static. And if there was a letter in a word that was silent, it would go back to almost nothing because it's something that isn't spoken. But we didn't stop at just making the fonts. We embedded them inside of a web browser extension to support anyone who's struggling to read. Whether you're a struggling reader in a third grade inner city class, or an immigrant who's new to our country, or a part of the large population of men and women in prison who just never quite learned to read, with the web browser extension, you can read any digital content you love and be supported. You see, when you struggle to read, you kind of don't want to read because it points out your weakness, but you will read when it's something that you love. If you want to read CNN or ESPN or Time for Kids, simply go to the website that's of interest to you and find an article. 
Then click our web browser extension, which will re-render the text on the screen in one of our fonts, like C-Type. Here's how it works. Anytime you're struggling to decode a word, simply roll over the letter or letters and receive a visual and auditory cue while in the context of reading. If you don't need the help, don't roll over it. They're like hidden drawers, there to support you when and if you need it. Now, we just recently released this product on our website for free in beta form. Comments have been favorable. Several experienced typeface designers have praised it for its novel use of variable font technology. Teachers are excited to use it in their classrooms, and educational researchers are eager to test its effects. Me, I just want to get it into the hands of the people who need it the most. Now, I'm often asked, where is Caleb today? You might be familiar with this story. There's Caleb, the one in color. You see, with the help of his mom, who was a teacher, he overcame. And last spring, he graduated from Morehouse. While Caleb was my inspiration, this tool is broader than any one person or any particular reading issue. You see, I believe this is about accessibility for anyone struggling to read. My name is Renee Seward, and I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to eradicate illiteracy, one person at a time, through the power of a font. And that's my idea worth sharing. Who wants to help me?